QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Convert CSV file to QBO data file so we can upload it into the QuickBooks Desktop bank feeds. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks desktop bank fee practice file. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time. View drop down. We got the hide icon bar open windows list checked off. Open windows open on the left. Reports drop down. Company financial PL profit loss income statement. Change the range 01122 to 123122. Customizing the report. Fonts numbers need to change to 14. That's where they need to be. They have to be there. That's, they need to be there. And then reports drop down again. Company financial this time. Balance sheet standards. Customizing it for the change of the range. 010122 to 123122. And then fonts and numbers also changing to that 14 uh, spot. Okay. Yes and okay. Banking drop down, bank feeds. We're looking bank feed center, people, which would only be there if we set up bank feeds, which we did in the prior presentation. So we're now looking at the two items we uploaded to the bank feeds, the checking account and the credit cards. Now we're thinking about the PayPal. We noted last time that we had a few kind of things that we might do for these intermediary trans uh, platforms, including possibly just waiting till the deposits clear the bank and then recording them that way in our normal checking account if we're just using them as an intermediary platform although we do lose some data that way or we can try to use an app to help us to integrate the uh, systems and the platforms or we can try to uh, make another bank feed for the PayPal, which we cannot do directly at this point in time, a direct connect with the desktop version, I don't believe without possibly an app to help with that process. So we can download the data and enter that into the system. We could do that manually by entering into the register, or we could try to upload the bank feed file into the system, which is what we're going to do here. Now, so we, if I if I think about the downloading of the data file, we download it as a CSV file because PayPal currently doesn't have the option, which hopefully they'll change at some point in time, of downloading a QBO data file, which is the file necessary to make that automatic kind of upload into the desktop version. So then the question is, well, once I have this file, the CSV file, which usually is opened up, we can open it up just like as an Excel file without any of the formatting for it. Just remember, it's not an Excel file. If you do any formatting to it, it's going to disappear. We cleaned it all up. So we just have basically date and then the information here and then the increases and decreases in one column so that we can now uh, just use this to transfer it into a CSV file, into a QBO file. And that's what we'll do this time. Note, if you only have this many transactions, you could just try to upload it directly into uh, the, the QuickBooks system manually. You could just enter it into the register and that wouldn't take uh, too much time. But we'll try to use the conversion software. So we're gonna be using this software. I'm not promoting them. It's just a software that's, that's advertising that it can do the conversion. And you could look at the payment structure on it here if you wanted to check it out on your own. I think it allows you to convert 10 items for free. So if you had a lot of, of uploads, you'd have to break them out possibly into multiples of 10 if you didn't want to pay for it, which we'll test out at this point in time. So let's say on ours, for example, we've got you know 15 transactions. So let's save two of these. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to say file save as, and I'll try to make another CVS file, which will be PayPal 2. So I'm going to say, okay. And so now if I look at my data, I'm going to close this up. I've got PayPal 1 and PayPal 2. 
So then I'm going to open both of these up. So I'm going to open up PayPal one. I kind of adjusted the order of them before. So you could try, try to adjust, like if I select these items and I go to the data and I want to put my filters in here, I could sort and it should be sorted by date, which will typically be sorted by default by date. And then I'm going to open up the other one too. I'm going to say PayPal two. And notice that those, those sorting fields will go away because it's a CSV file when I save it. I'm going to say data sort filters by date. And then I'd like to compare the two files. So I'm going to put these side by side. And so then we'll say, okay, so now let's bring this one down to like here and then delete everything underneath it, right click and delete. And then this one will start at the 24 and we'll delete everything above it. So we've got two files that are less than 10 transactions that I can convert each of them. Hopefully I didn't delete anything too important. So I'm going to say save it, save it. And then I'll say save that one. So there we have it. I'm going to save, replace CSV2. Okay. So now I'm going to open up my converter software over here and I'm going to browse for my file. So I'm going to say that this is on the desktop and we've got PayPal one. So it pulls over the transactions. So that looks good. I want to convert it to a QBO type of file. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and convert it and see what happens here. So we're going to say, all right, select and then we'll put this on the desktop paypal one boom conversion process so here we have it it might try to open up your your quickbooks automatically and upload it but we'll do that later so now we've got our file for that one i'm going to do the same thing for the second one now so i'm just going to say all right let's do the second one that worked good so i'm going to say let's try the uh, CSV2 on the desktop or the PayPal, PayPal2, PayUpPal. It's going to go to a QBO. So we're going to say, okay, everything looks like it's working the way it's supposed to. So let's do that. And then it converts that one. Again, it might try to open QuickBooks and open it up automatically, but we're not going to, I'm not going to do that here. I'm not going to do that yet. We'll do that next time. So now we've got these two files that are the QB uh, O files for PayPal one and PayPal two, and I can use those to upload. So that it looks like that software is working pretty good. It's kind of a pain that you got to, you know, do this conversion thing. I would hope that PayPal uh, would, would make it so you can have a QBO file at some point in the future. They have other file types. I'm not sure why they wouldn't use this one. It's quite common or, and, or that QuickBooks would allow the link to happen and or allow us to upload the CSV file and the CVS file or whatever. Uh, but you can use a conversion or an application possibly uh, to help out with that. If you paid for this, then you can have a whole bunch of transactions that you could download and upload in a similar fashion. So next time we'll add these into QuickBooks as we've done with the prior items here. We'll end up with another PayPal account that we'll have to set up. We'll add the date, the detail into the system and we'll see the difference between, you know, just waiting until something clears the bank and as, adding it as income to adding the PayPal income as income and then uh, matching out the transfers from PayPal to the checking account. Mm -hmm.